All right, Shalom, Brother Ra coming to you with another video. Before I move forward, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible and who rule well. A double Shalom to all the Akim out there pushing the truth, the truth and sincerity, regardless of whom here or forbears. This video is an exhortation. For you sincere brothers out there pushing the truth, okay, and truth and sincerity, okay, and the title of this video is called The Servant Shall Eat. Who are the servants? The servants of the Lord, all right, who are out there doing the work in truth and sincerity. You know, through the Spirit, I was speaking to one of the brothers, the head of the camp, you know, Brother Hawad, and um, a conversation, you know, sparked the, the, you know, the Spirit to do this lesson, okay? Now... You know, what's been on the rise are a lot of uh, shipping container homes. OK, and these homes are decked out. They're basically converting shipping containers into many houses like, you know, where you have, uh, you know, um, what do you call them? Um, solar panels. OK, then you have battery operated uh, generators. OK. And, and you got a lot of these rich Edomites that are buying these shipping container homes and putting them out into these uh, these rural areas, you know, off the grid, so to speak. And these shipping containers homes are basically for the minute of the Lord. You know, so without further ado, I want to bring out this article, you know, it's beautiful because <laughs> we come into these times and through the spirit, you can tell that a lot of these 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 goodies that these rich Edomites are putting away these. um underground bunkers you know these basements that are decked out for um um, um you know for uh, doomsday preppers you know all of these things are, are basically for the men of the lord man so without further ado i'm bringing out this article all right it's uh it's from quickenloans.com all right and the title says what you need to know about shipping container homes and this came out about four weeks ago it says jason Ruick's family weekend cabin isn't your standard vacation home. The 1,300 square foot structure is made of shipping containers. Nestled right outside of Bukagian, Ontario, in Canada, the cozy cabin known as the Octopod is surrounded by stands of trees. It's made of seven shipping containers and includes a washroom and covered sauna. Built with sustainability in mind, electricity for the cottage is provided by a battery powered generator. The water system is a solar water pump. <laughs> There's a water tower inside the house that pumps the water up to a giant tank that gravity feeds to all the fixtures throughout the cottage. It says a trend that's growing in popularity in recent years. Shipping container homes have obvious appeal. Besides having the option of living off the grid, you see, because a lot of these shipping container homes are basically uh, being used for living off the grid. And, you know, uh, these Edomites, they like to um, go hunting. They like to, um, you know, be off the grid, so to speak, you know. So so you'll find these container homes uh out in rural areas man you're not going to find them in the city but you know hey look we're going to be you know lord willing we endure to the end and um when jacob's trouble hit what, what are the men of the lord going to do going to flee flee from these things all right and then come upon these same container homes that these rich edomites have have put aside who, who have basically um bought and purchased and had installed uh outside of the city okay it says a trend that's growing in popularity in recent years. Shipping container homes have obvious appeal. Besides having the option of living off the grid, you're using reclaimed materials to build out all the traditional features of a home. It's not it's like it, it's nice not to depend on the outside world, said rule of sea container cabin in Toronto. If we were to live here, the only thing we would really need to survive is food. See, because everything else is provided already. And a lot of these container homes already have um, uh, food 
stored away that have um, a long shelf life. You know, you got some some food items that that are that have shelf life up to 10 years, man. And these Edomites, they're not just buying these container homes uh, empty. They're 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 packing them with goodies, man. All right. And again, all of this for them in the Lord through the spirit. All right. It says. And that's pretty much what I want to bring on that. But uh, like the scriptures say, the servants shall eat. So I'm bring out a, a few precepts. Lord willing, be edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13, it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, Behold, my servants shall eat. Again, Isaiah 65 and 13, Therefore, saith the Lord, Behold, my servants shall eat. Hey, so the men of the Lord are going to eat, man. The ones who's doing his work, the ones who are doing his work in truth and sincerity. Hey, the servants of the Lord are going to eat, man. And how are the servants of the Lord going to eat? One of the ways is by these shipping container homes, man, who are, which, which is off the grid, man, packed with food. Just like the movie The Road, man. When, when you watch the movie The Road, um, the man and his son who uh, stumbled upon the underground bunker and what was it filled with? All types of food, man. Canned goods, uh, you know, perishable items, man. Okay? And and what do they do? They they, they uh, feasted off uh, the food that was there, took some food, and, and kept it moving after a while. You know, spent the night there, and then the next day, they, they got it, kept it moving, man. But it was ultimately there for, for them to survive. You know? It says, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. And the, the ones that that didn't take heed to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, the ones that uh, that gave up and it's true, hey, they're going to be hungry, man. Okay, they're going to starve to death, man. Okay, because a famine is going to hit this place, as the scriptures tell you. All right, a famine of bread, a thirst for water. These things are coming forth, you know. Lamentations, I'm going to bring out a precept here and I'm going to jump back. Lamentations chapter 4 by 9, it's like it. Lamentations 4, Chapter uh, verse nine, they that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger, you know, because in the times it's coming forth with Jacob's trouble, you know, martial laws com coming, race riots coming, you know, uh, famine of bread is coming. Well, a lot of people going to starve to death, man. OK, and, and the scriptures say it's better to be slain by the sword, meaning uh, to be killed by any uh, any uh, killing instrument. The gun, the sword, the knife, okay, being um, getting your head chopped off by the guillotine. Hey, it, look, they, it's better to get your head chopped off in the guillotine or to be killed by any killing instrument than to starve to death, man. Okay, but the scriptures say the servants of the Lord will eat. Lamentations 4 and 9. For these pine away stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. So your body's going to eat away at itself for not having um the the nutrients the food to survive okay so these are the times that's coming forth to here in america man other other parts of the four corners of the earth but it's going to take it's going to be heavy here in america man all right so isaiah 65 and 13 it says therefore thus saith the lord yahweh shai behold my servants shall eat but ye shall be hungry behold my servants shall drink but ye shall be thirsty. And in these same uh, shipping container homes, they have water sources, man. Tapped in, you know, to the nearest stream or river, you know, but still off the grid, so to speak. And so, this, hey, the men of the Lord are going to drink, man. Then you're going to have some of these um, homes have uh, wine, you know. You know, so, so the men of the Lord are going to um, eat good, good in that day, man. Eat lovely in that day, man. You know, eat and drink lovely. It says, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Hey, so the men of the Lord are going to, uh, gonna, hey man, rejoice in that day. You know, because they're going to be, well, we're going to be well taken care of, Lord willing, we endure to the end. You know, you, um, you running off the grid, you know, uh, the RFID chip is made mandatory. And you you get your shit and you haul ass. Excuse my language. You know you go out to the to the woods to the wilderness, and lo and behold, there you have a shipping container. You know, no no type of um 
nobody in this shipping container. The door is unlocked. You go in. OK, the water, there's, there's water there. There's there's food there, you know. Nowhere, nobody uh, anywhere in sight. Hey, man, you're going to we're going to rejoice in that day. We're going to be thanking the Lord for 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 uh, feeding us, you know, for for giving us water, protecting us in that day. But the ones that didn't take heed to you, how about Shemiah Shai, they're going to be ashamed, man. They're going to die slowly, man, through that famine, through the race riots, you know, and ultimately through uh, Lord Yahweh Shai shooting them down with laser beams, okay? And then um, from the thermonuclear fire, the destruction is coming from the uh, ICBM missiles, all right? They're going to be ashamed for, for not taking heed to you. How about Shemiah Yahweh Shai, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Okay? Isaiah 65 and 14, behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of the spirit. So the servant of the Lord going to be singing, going to be rejoiceful in that day because we're going to see true mercy in that day, man. When you, everyone around you just about, okay. If you're not with the brothers, you're not, you know, uh, you know, the Lord has your family with you or, or, or whatever. Everyone around you, you, you know, basically losing their lives, uh, you know, through famine and, you know, all types of uh, hell break loose. But meanwhile, you know, you're off the grid and living in a plush house. OK. And you're going to like like the brother Aram, you know, likes to say, um, you know, we're going to really, choose, really, truly see mercy in that day, man. You know, we're going to really see mercy in that day when you get to eat, drink, be rejoiceful. All right. While everyone else around you, OK, is, is starving, you know. I'm going to bring out another precept. All right. The book of uh, Psalm chapter 33. Let's see. The book of Psalm chapter 33. Verse 18, and it reads, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Yeah, the Lord is, <laughs> everything we do is not in vain, man. The Lord, the, the, the um, scriptures say, the Lord's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. And the Lord is watching and, and keeping an eye on the ones that fear him. All right. And how is he keeping an eye on the ones that fear him? Through his angels. Okay. Taking, taking a tab of the ones that fear him. Right. Hey, and what, what do we know? Fear is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, pursuing the Proverbs one and seven. OK, but the Lord knows who fear him. As the scriptures tell you that as well. Let me see. Let me prove that. Yep. As a matter of fact, yeah, let me bring this out. The book of Nahum, chapter one, verse seven, the Lord. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. All right. The Lord knows who trust in him. The Lord knows who fear him, because when you fear the Lord, you trust in him. OK, so going back to Psalm chapter 33, verse 18, behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Yep. That's, that's, that's the spirit because the ones that fear you, how about Shemi was shy? What they, they hope in his mercy as well. Okay. You know, we, we hope that the Lord shows us kindness in that day, loving kindness, shows us, um, gives us uh, help and shield us in that day. You know, the same way that he, um, he, he protected, you know, the prophets, you know, when Obadiah hid a uh, hundred prophets by the fifties in the caves and fed them gave them bread and water okay the same way he fed elijah you know using the ravens um to feed him you know in, in, in the time of trouble so look the lord is going to protect those that ultimately trust in him and we're going to know what mercy is in, in in that day man but here's the point psalm 33 and 19 it says to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine OK, and famine is coming forth. OK, famine is coming forth and the Lord is going to keep his servants alive, man. 
yeah, you're going to have some that are martyrs for this truth. But uh, ultimately, like the scriptures say, um, the, the, um, the dead shall rise first, man. All right. If you die with integrity in this truth, hey, look, you're still going to receive salvation, man. And you'll be a part of the if, if you're a part of the elect, which ultimately the elect are going to endure it to the end. All right. So, again, it reads Psalm 33 and 19 to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. It says, verse 20, our soul waited for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. And the Lord is going to help the men of the Lord, you know, in many ways, which he's doing now. OK, well, he, he has angels around them um, that, that encamped around them that fear him. OK. And also, too, when when that famine hits, these um, underground bunkers, these shipping container homes. It's going to be uh, our help. It's going to be our shield that the Lord is going to give as a gift for, for, for his servants so they can eat, they can drink, you know, in that day. It reads, verse 21, for our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. And that goes back to the servants rejoicing in that day because they trusted in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And look, it, you're going you're gonna to appreciate that, man beyond words uh, can can describe man because you, you're going to appreciate the fact that you're going you're going to rejoice in the fact that you trust in your how about shimmy all right you 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 trusted in the true uh names of your heavenly father and only begotten son by praying and um trusting in how in, in those names trusting in the lord that he's going to deliver you and hear you it says verse 22 let thy mercy O lord be upon us according as we hope in thee you know so we hope we have faith in these things, man. All right. So what if some don't believe, man? We believe these things, man. Okay. We believe that Yahweh Shimei is going to protect us. Lord said, um, you know, they shall call my name and I will hear them. You know, so we believe these things, man. And the Lord is not a man that he should lie. Roman, uh, it's like Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. Okay. Right. We we uh, we haven't seen famine or martial law hit, you know, in these times. OK, but we know it's coming forth through the prophecies of the segment of time that we're in. All right. We're showing that, um, you know, all these signs by measuring the times diligently and what's going on in the news and linking them up that we're in the times that uh, these things are coming forth, man. You know, famine is going to hit. OK. And we believe these things. And we also believe the Lord is going to, um, if, if we endure to the end and we remain uh, faithful, okay, and diligent in this truth, that the Lord is going to take care of us, that he's going to have mercy on us, all right? Okay? And, and we believe through the spirit, power and spirit we have by Shemel Shah, we're going to eat in that day, okay? We truly believe that. Now we haven't been in that situation, but we hope, and when you look into the word hope, it goes back to expectation. So we expect that the Lord is going to protect us in that day if we're truly um, the servants of the Lord. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So that's truly what faith is. We haven't been in that situation. All right. We've never seen it before, but we believe that, that the Lord is going to take care of us when we're put in that situation. All right. And the last precept I want to bring out is, um, matter of fact, I'm going to bring out a couple more. Psalm chapter 37, verse 25. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Okay, so the Lord, uh, so like it, so um, King David, you know, saying that he's been young and he's been old, but he's never seen the righteous uh, forsaken. The Lord has never turned his back on the righteous, man. Okay, nor um, the, the um, it says, nor his seed begging bread. OK, why? Because the, the, the servants of the Lord is going to eat, man. The Lord is going to take care of the servants of the Lord. Whether you go through ups and downs, whether we go through famine, you know, the Lord is going to take care of his men. OK. And um, last precept I want to bring out is uh, Sirach chapter two, verse 10. And it reads. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? You know, you look at um, the generations of old and you, you look back, uh, King, um, a matter of fact, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, King David, King Solomon, Lord Yahweh Shai. 
okay? Who are people ignorantly called Jesus. You know, you look at you look at all the all of our ancient forefathers, okay? Hey, did, did any of them um were any of them ashamed by trusting in the Lord? No, the Lord always took care of his men. Always. Always took care of his men. Sirach 2 and 10. Read it on. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Okay, because the Lord is not going to turn his back. The Lord, the Lord is, is going to keep his word. You know, he says, scriptures say, um, um, matter of fact, let me see. Yeah, the scriptures say, I just brought out uh, Psalm 37 and 25. Um, you never seen the righteous forsaken, um, nor the seed begging bread. All right, because the righteous are going to trust in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay, Sirach 2 and 10, read and on. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? And that word despise means hate. So Lord don't hate. The Lord has pleasure in you calling his name. You know, calling his name to, to, um, to, to, to be saved. You know, he has pleasure in the righteous calling his name. Okay, he's going to take care of, you, uh, of the men of the Lord, man. And again, you know, through the spirit, these shipping container homes, is, is uplifting to see because you know that this ultimately is for the men of the Lord, man. You know, it's for the men of the Lord. So as these times come forth, hey man, we got a lot to look forward to, man. The kingdom, first and foremost, you know. But with that being said, um, you know, we just gotta hold on and keep doing the works, man, to the best of our ability. And Lord willing, you know, receive salvation. Be protected in those in these days is coming forward because it's a, it's a time that's never been seen before, man. So with that being said, before I close out, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible and who rule well. A double shalom to all the Akim out there pushing the truth and truth in sincerity, regardless of whom here or forbears. Shalom.